Let's talk tech today with Chris McCall. He is CEO of Photokite. Welcome to our studios in Zurich. Thanks very much. Coming to us from Southern California originally, but what, the last five, six years in Zurich? That's right. What brought you to Switzerland? Uh, you know, what really attracted me was the uh, high specialty in drone technologies. Um, when I was looking to kind of make my next uh, career move, I saw just an absolute hotbed of uh, talent here in aerial robotics. Mm. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet uh, the founder and CTO of our company, Sergei Lupashin, uh, just as he was starting to spin off his company, which we call Photokite, from the local university here, ETH Zurich. Okay, and that's how you became involved. But you were actually employee number one of Photokite. Yeah, that's right. All right, so you've been there from the beginning. Yeah, so I think uh, there's been kind of a core group of us uh, there from the beginning that uh, really helped to push the early technology. Uh, we'll be able to talk about some of our uh, first products here pretty soon. Mm. Um, and it's been an exciting ride. And you are officially, though, then an ETH spinoff. That's right. Yep. Okay, that's the official term. Yeah, about four, four and a half years ago, we spun off from the ETH Zurich, um, and uh, ever since we've been running. All right, so what is it that Photokai does? We've got a drone up on the back wall. Yeah. <laughs> we mentioned that you came here for robotics. Mm -hmm. Give us the, the elevator pitch. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, Photokite's working on a special type of drone. It's called a tethered drone. Um, we do tethered, something, yeah. As we, in tied. Yeah, down. it actually has a physical cable connected to it. Okay, hence the kite. Uh, that's right, yeah. So it flies like a kite. Uh, mm. We do something pretty unique where we actively use that tether to determine where the system is in closed loop form. Uh, what that means is ultimately the user, the operator, doesn't need to actively pilot the system. Uh, they don't need to handle the system at all. The system flies itself, it uh, launches itself, and it lands itself. So we kind of take the operator out of the equation. Uh, we allow them to use it only when they need to. Okay, but all the while, it still is tethered to something. That's right, yeah. So our very earliest system, which you see up here on the back wall, we call that the Photokite Pro. That was our very first product ever. And what we tried to do that, or uh, develop that for, was specifically for broadcasters, right? Huh. Uh, to be able to fly this and land it uh, without needing to worry about uh, really operating the system once it's up in the air. All the user had to do, all the cameraman had to do, was just focus on framing the shot. Um, from a base technology, what we were able to demonstrate is something that uh, you didn't need to be a pilot uh, to be able to get that aerial shot, right? Okay. Uh, since then, we've focused quite a bit more on public safety applications. So taking this same technology, this same concept, uh, and building it towards something that firefighters and public safety officers would be able to use mm -hmm. in complex, emerging, dynamic situations. Sort of search, rescue, safety, especially with firefighters. Yeah, Tell me right. about this. Yeah, we're very much focused on the firefighting application. So basically what we're building is a special type of drone that goes inside of a box, an enclosure, and mm -hmm. that enclosure goes up on top of a fire truck so that a firefighter can pull up to an emergency scene and just push a button. Up and the on thing top. opens up and, yeah. the, and it... Exactly. Up on top of the fire truck, the enclosure opens up. The photokite flies up all by itself and starts to live stream thermal video down to all the firefighters on the ground. What this gives them is something they call situational awareness, right? So they get to okay. see the hot spots of the fire. They get to see maybe the survivors in the backyard and make quicker, easier decisions based off of a new type of information, a new type of data that they have now. Okay, and you actually tested this recently here in the Zurich area, is That's that right? right? Yeah, we, we, had, we had a great, great ability to go deploy with some Swiss firefighters. Uh, deployments went really, really well. Um, and what they were doing is basically simulating a fire type of scenario, right? And using this to help make decisions on how to respond to that fire. And how did that work out? What kind of feedback did you get? How did it go? Yeah, the feedback was great. Uh, there was a lot of interest in the technology. Uh, having kind of this aerial view ended up being really helpful in several different scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I think what we, what we got was a lot of interest in this technology, right? We, we saw that there's a great amount of need for it, uh, and we're excited to be working on it. Uh, we expect to be deploying these out on real fire trucks as early as next year.
in Switzerland. That's correct. Yeah. Or in, so will this be your test market for that? Actually, our, our first market is going to be in the U.S. We're focusing uh, quite a bit with, with the customers that we have now on U.S. firefighting. Um, and, Where? Uh, Sorry? Where? Uh, throughout the country. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, based off of the relationships that we have here in Switzerland as well, uh, this is somewhere that we'd like to deploy very, very quickly thereafter. Yeah, I think, I think what's most important is, uh, you know, that we're creating something that's going to be usable on an everyday basis uh, to be able to help firefighters, help public safety officers um, just use the system and make quicker decisions. Uh, based off of information that they haven't traditionally had available. Right? Mm -hmm. To get aerial perspectives, uh, to date, they've basically had to call out a helicopter. So they couldn't use drones before? Uh, there's a few, there's a small number of firefighters that are using drones these days. Uh, the issue is, is they're quite limited in the application. There's plenty of regulatory, uh, safety, as well as kind of uh, well, training uh, what makes Photofy different? Uh, so we're really focused on uh, this technology where you basically push a button and the system launches, flies, and lands itself. Uh, when you do and that... And the fact that it's attached is yeah. also an important thing? Yeah, or? I think there's a lot of safety benefits to having a tethered system as well, right? You eliminate the flyaway scenario, for example, right? Mm -hmm. One of the big limitations on drones being able to use, be used in cities is because if GPS drops out, and there's no active pilot on the system, right. uh, these systems tend to just fly away, right? <laughs> that's, that's a very bad scenario. Yeah. Uh, so what we're creating is something a little bit safer, a little bit more accountable, mm. uh, something that's, uh, I think, easier to implement here in the short term. Tell me about your trip with Venture Leaders, where you were very successful. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Uh, basically, uh, 10 of us entrepreneurs were selected uh, to go represent our companies. And, and from Switzerland. That's right, from Switzerland, from the technology uh, space, uh, and go pitch our technologies, pitch our companies to uh, some world-class VC investors over in the Silicon Valley area. Mm. Um, and the experience was fantastic. Uh, from an early stage company perspective, the feedback that we were able to generate on a very quick cycle uh, over that week that we were all together was, I think, extremely valuable for, for a lot of the teams. What was your biggest takeaway? Oh, man, I think <laughs> that uh, when it comes to really talking about your company, it's important to talk about the, the vision, talk about the uh, purpose of what you're doing. Uh, not focus just on the technology itself, because obviously the technology is just a means to an end. Aha, uh -huh. what's the end? Uh, the end for us is just better firefighting, better public safety mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to make quicker decisions, help save lives and preserve property. Was this uh, always the goal though? Because you started, like you said, the first applications were for broadcast. Yeah, yeah, we had quite a bit of mission seek, right? To, mm -hmm. to figure out where we can really apply this in the most meaningful way. Mm -hmm. uh, where we've landed is public safety operations and we couldn't be happier about it. And this, and this works. Yeah, absolutely. So. Something, and when we talk about drones, there's always this question of regulation. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel we are at this point? I mean, has the regulation caught up with the technology? Oh man, it's, uh, it's quite dynamic. It's changing every single day, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what we try to create is something that's going to be working with regulators, working with legislation uh, to be able to be used in everyday situations. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where a lot of traditional drone technologies have really fallen short. Um, it's and a big burden ultimately to the uh, end user, right? Yeah. If a firefighter or a public safety officer wants to go out there and use a drone today, there's a lot of hurdles that they have to jump through. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to uh, eliminate those as much as possible. And specifically in Switzerland? Uh, Switzerland's actually been very progressive about the use of drones. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, that's, that's maybe one of the reasons why there's such a hotbed for uh, mm -hmm. the drone technologies and development here. Uh, we've been very lucky to, to be working really closely with Bodsel and FOCA, um, and we couldn't, yeah, I think... And I mean, these are just for the, the, the organizations you mentioned? That's are. right. These are, these are specifically here in Switzerland, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, now, the next step would be to talk to and work with people like the FAA over in the U.S., right, or CAA in the U.K., mm -hmm. um, and this is, this is exactly what we're doing now. And when we look at scalability, because this is always the challenge with startups, mm -hmm. is that how scalable can you be? I mean, where are you with this? Sure. I think uh, when, when I hear scalability, the first thing that comes to mind is team, right? Uh, how will we grow our team uh, to continue bringing on just 
uh, absolute A-grade players that can contribute and, and help grow the team, the culture, the vision uh, in, in everybody's individual way. Um, a lot of people talked about scalability of, well, how do you go from producing 100 units to 1,000 units to 10,000 to 100,000? Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing by itself is enough of a challenge, certainly. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the team to support that, mm -hmm. uh, especially from a product development and product readiness standpoint, uh, you're never going to get there anyways. But do you want to? Is that the, is that the goal? Is, is the goal to just create the technology and sell the technology, or is it to take it to market? I think, I think the goal is to really help out uh, the applications that we're going after, right? So ultimately what we're really targeting is better firefighting, right? Be better public safety response. Mm -hmm. um, first responders, I think, can really benefit on a daily basis mm -hmm. uh, from better situational awareness information. Mm -hmm. And so if we keep that end user, that goal in mind, uh, we'll come up with better technology to meet that need. Uh, it's, uh, it's maybe not the best approach to start with a technology and then search for a goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, <laughs> probably not. But, um, but yes, it's always a question of where, you know, what's the end? Mm -hmm. What is the end uh, idea? Yeah, I think, I think our kind of the, the end goal for us is basically having these things deployed out in the real world mm -hmm. on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can start aggregating information and, and data about how uh, firefighters are really using these, you can really make a big impact. And have you made now the step from startup to spin off? Are you still a startup? Uh, we're, oh. we're still a startup. You're still a startup. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, and and uh, I mean, we're a 20 person team uh, and, and growing quickly. Okay. Uh, we spun off from ETH Zurich uh, four, four and a half years ago. Uh, but, uh, but, but yeah. Still a startup. Still a so startup. So where are you on this journey? Um, well, I think we're very heavily in product development and just starting to very recently get these things deployed out in the real world with, okay. with real users like the Swiss firefighters very recently. And real investments? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've brought in some real investments. We've been lucky to have some great investors on board so far, and those have really helped kind of uh, the, the beginning of the journey. Was it an easy sell? <laughs> uh, well, I think that uh, we've been able to really get people excited about our application, excited about the traction that we've built so far. Mm -hmm. um, I think every investor is different. They're going to be interested in different things. The people who are in this space know drone technologies. They've been, they've been uh, reacting pretty well to, to what we're pitching so far. All right. Yeah. So just to finish up, what's the next step? Uh, for me, I think the, the real next step is the first time that this system is used uh, in the real world on a real firefighting uh, response and helps to uh, bring you know, uh, somebody home safely, helps to preserve some property. Uh, that's, that's the real next goal, is the first time this is used meaningfully. That's, I think, a big, big milestone for us as a company.